Now Bellator and PFL have merged. I think I should still be next in line. My end goal is to be a world champion. Like that is my end goal. I will, I will strive to get there. I have the skills and abilities to, to be a world champion. I don't care if he's tapping on my arm. I'm not out of this fight until I feel the ref grab me and say, stop, stop. My name is Mike Malott. I'm from Burlington, Ontario, Canada. I now live in Font Hill in the Niagara region. I fight out of Niagara Top Team, House of Champions MMA, and Ouroboros Jiu Jitsu. My name is Aaron Jeffrey. I'm a professional mixed martial artist. I fight for Bellator MMA and I fight out of Niagara Top Team. All right, hi guys. I'm uh, Jason Jess Davizius. I fight in the UFC at 125 pounds. My name is Surya City. I fight out of Aegis MMA and Burlington Training Center in uh, Oakville and Burlington, and I'm a Bantamweight fighter for the UFC. So I come to Niagara Top Team on Mondays. The reason is because this is one of the best wrestling rooms uh, in, in Ontario. As soon as I started training, I was just obsessed with the process of like trying to get better, trying to learn. I was bullied as a kid and uh, had low self-esteem, so fighting was something that definitely helped me build self-confidence. And uh, yeah, ever since I started, I haven't looked back. I started training at like in my hometown in Tilsonburg and then when I moved here and went to Brock in 2010 that's when I started at a, a better gym so I'll say 2010 is when I started like officially training like this wasn't my career choice like I was going to Brock for medical sciences but I agreed to take the amateur fight and I loved it um, I started training with Chris Prickett and going to the Brock wrestling team um, and I was an MMA guy uh, and all those guys are specialists like I had to really work my wrestling defense to not get put on my ass over and over again in the in the wrestling room and I think that's like one of the strongest aspects of my game now is my wrestling defense stuck with it and here we are however many years later um, so I kind of started my MMA journey a little bit later I, I wasn't one of those people that started when they were a kid and everything so I've been in the UFC for I think two years. Uh, my whole entire martial arts journey, I think it's been all, like less than 10. For me personally, I've had a lot of life experience prior to, to fighting. So it's those, those like crazy times in my life that I can translate in cage. I think your day-to-day -day translates to the cage more than your cage translates to day-to-day. -to -day. If you're the kind of person who gets cut off in traffic and flips out at the guy in front of you, you're the kind of person who loses control in day-to-day -day situations, so you're definitely going to lose control in the cage, and I kind of look for that in guys. So I started training when I was 13, kind of casually, through high school, trained a couple times a week. After high school, I went to a, a bigger gym, and those guys trained like actual full-time fighters. So. Had a little bit of a rude awakening there, um, but uh, kind of kick-started my journey to uh, fight professionally. I moved to California to train with Team Alpha Male, high-level MMA gym there. I was four years between fights, but three of those years I was like, I'm not gonna compete in MMA. I was just coaching, and when I was coaching MMA, I was competing in Jiu-Jitsu. And so I kind of have like a coaching part of my brain that helps coach the fighter version of me and now I do my camps here full time and uh, take the things that I like from from those different areas and those different teams and add them to what we already have here that's been so successful. It changed the trajectory of my life. I wasn't going to move to Team Alpha Male until I lost that fight. After losing that fight I was like I'm definitely moving to California. You, you have one shot at this life and this, this career. Go do it now. If you think that's the best thing to do, go do it. Um, I wore that as like a, a cloak of shame for years losing that fight. I was so embarrassed that I lost, but at the same time, it's like I needed to have that in order to grow to become who I am. I always say it's like nothing kind of gets that fire going under us than a loss. You know, you come to terms with it and, and you use it as motivation. When it's in those hard rounds, you think of that feeling, that, that 
terrible like heavy feeling on you and that's what gives you like the motivation and the power to to find that finish in those rounds that you're exhausted and um so i talked i talked with chris mostly about this just like staying sharp being a little bit more on edge all the time going into a fight rather than super mellow so much of this sport is mental of course it's physical i feel like especially with in women's sport a, a lot of it is like you know just kind of having that that drive and like you know that can that can get you so far in in the sport is just kind of like going for it a big component of my mental game is visualization and stuff you know like i really like to like put myself in those atmospheres and again do all the things physically as well as mentally to prepare for my fight uh, mike mike's been helping me ever since uh honestly like for years now, to be honest, but he always get, had that confidence in me that I was going to get to the UFC. And now I'm fighting on the same card, card as him and uh, and Jasmine, and you know they're, they're two role models, two people that I really look up to. I think one of the bigger things now for me is like setting an example for some of the younger guys. Like here, they call me team captain. Like this is this is my priority, um, and I try and show that to the younger guys. Like if you want to if you want to get to the highest level, you got to make this to your priorities. Um, iron sharpens iron. You know, if I'm not struggling in the room, if I'm not getting beat up on a consistent basis in the training room, um, if the coaches aren't giving me details and things to work on, I feel like I'm not progressing enough, and it uh, it will definitely mess up my confidence when walking in a fight. For sure, yeah. The the better my training partners get, the better I get. It's it's very 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 important to to have all the variety, who are who are better than you, who are worse than you. I saw every part of the spectrum, like what worked, what definitely didn't work, what you know, what worked for certain guys, and I, I started to understand how unique MMA is to, to different athletes and how there isn't like one cookie cutter style for everybody. I have very, very good training partners, but women's body and men's body, they move different, they train different. I think it's very important to have both training partners, female and male, because men will push you in one direction and females will push you in another direction. Yeah, you need a team atmosphere. Like I've, I've been to other gyms before too, where there's like little cliques of guys. Everyone's trying to beat each other up and there's no team atmosphere. It's not guys trying to help each other. Even though it is an individual sport the day you step into the cage, at the end of the day, it is a team sport. Um, like we compete with each other, but there's always like the camaraderie. We're trying to make each other better. Like like there's a, there's a sick atmosphere you have like Mikey and Powell like screaming after practice, hard work. The team continues to grow. I mean, just a few years ago, there was not really any Niagara top team. It was like a, a name they came up with, but it was just a few of us like training in a basement, finding different spots where we could get together. Now we have like a, a great facility here. So yeah, it's definitely growing. Like everyone's constantly in the room. Everyone's always helping each other out. When somebody's fighting, they're making sure to give them the important rounds and let the coaches take the intention and and everything, it's, uh, we have an amazing community here. There's a lot of people here on the way up that are gonna be in the UFC soon. There's a lot of amateurs that are gonna be pros, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I don't know, short-term goal is just continue to train and get better and win fights. Uh, Long-term, I want that title fight. I wanna be the Bellator champ. I started later, and so I, is it realistic for me to think I could be world champion? Maybe not, but deep down, you know, I, I know I can. I've trained with the best girls in the world and I see where my skills stack up against them. I always find those finishes. It's always, it always ends up being that way. I don't care where we are in the fight. I don't care if he's tapping on my arm. I'm not out of this fight until I feel the ref grab me and say, stop, stop. I have the skills and abilities to, to be a world champion. And I'm looking for that highlight wheel finish. I'm looking for that 50K bonus from Dana White too. Now Bellator and PFL have merged. I think I should still be next in line. My natural instinct is to, to do this. And um, I don't know, you, you feel alive in there. My end goal is to be a world champion. Like that is my end goal. I will, I will strive to get there. I don't care how it ends. I'm getting another stoppage. I'll have 11 wins with 11 stoppages. That's what's happening January 20th.